As there is so much to cover for the API scripting, I have selected fundamental applications and tried to cover all the bits and pieces in between. It is impossible to unpack everything, but there are additional concepts I would like to mention. The first is looping. In Python, you can use looping to do repetitive tasks. A simple example is to use a for loop. I will now demonstrate a simple for loop, where I will loop through a given range. This is an extremely basic example, but covering looping is an enormous task and beyond what we can look at in this demonstration. As you can see, when I run the code, it prints out the value of i incrementally. It will start at 0 and print up to 4. The for loop can also be used on lists. So for the list I had previously made, I can print out all of the items within that list. Effectively, in a loop, whatever is indented will be repeated a set number of times. You can also have nested for loops, where you have a loop within a loop, but these are more fundamental Python concepts, and there are resources online that can cover this far better than I can. Alternatively, you can use while loops, but I usually avoid them. I think that a badly defined while loop is the fastest way to crash your computer. Watch as I demonstrate how to make mechanical crash. Nothing's working. I guess it's time to call Cuvinsoft. External libraries are also built into the API. They can be imported into the API for specific tasks. I will now import the math library by typing in the following. If we now explore this library, we could see most of our typical mathematical functions such as sine, cos, tan, and mathematical constants are available. All of these can be called using the m dot, which is how I imported the library. Import math as m. For working with CSV files such as tables, which may be useful, you can import the CSV module. To do this, we can type in import CSV. We can see the available options in this library, such as the reader and the writer. You can also read and write text files and CSV files. The main code you will use in order to read and write files is open, write, and close. Unfortunately, not all Python libraries are included, such as NumPy and SciPy. But in future versions of ANSYS, this may not be the case. The functionality of the API is extremely useful and we have only scratched the surface of what can be done. You can control nearly anything, such as adding solution plots, extracting data from solution, manipulating graphics, including the camera, and exporting animations. For all of these features and capabilities available, I will yet again refer you to the help documentation. As the scripting functionality is expanded, the supporting documentation and journaling functionality will grow. To finish off the demonstration, I will give a very brief overview of my approach to using the scripting API and then onto the tips and tricks. Scripting is extremely robust and useful, but it is iterative. When you get started, there will be a lot of trial and error and far more testing of code and functions. When I approach the problem, I look at what I have available and what my end goal is. As expected, the first thing to try is Google. You will not always find the exact solution, but you might find something similar or learn how to use a function better. There might not be ANSYS mechanical specific help, but there is a large collection of resources for Python help. On this note, Stack Overflow should be a bookmark. This website is extremely useful and hopefully with scripting in ANSYS being more widely used, there will be more contributors online that can help. 
there is a very active community for Python in general on this website. When I start writing the code, the first thing I will do is always try and get one instance to work. For example, if I need to scope a boundary condition to many different geometries, I will only look at one to start and then I will look at five and progressively move through all of the boundary conditions from there. It's also important to look at different boundary conditions such as supports and loads and apply them individually. This can be done with a for loop. It is easy to say this when you have an idea about what's going on, but if you don't, this can be a daunting task. So I would suggest you look at example code in the help documentation. If the help documentation does not help, you can always use the help command. Not only does this give you useful information, but there are sometimes examples accompanying the help. Look at what the input and output data is and what the type of data is that is required for this function to work. This will help you see what you are working towards. You can use the journal recording and always try work backwards from there. Finally, if all else fails, try writing your coding process out by hand. This may seem simplistic, but often I've tried something and thought that I understood what it was going to do. But when I write it out by hand, logically step by step, I realize the flaws in the way I'm trying to construct the code. Now onto the tips and tricks. Some of these may seem simplistic, but over time and after making many mistakes, you will hopefully appreciate these tips. The first is to save your code regularly. This is probably advice that I should take myself. The worst feeling is getting something to work, changing one variable, making your shell crash and losing all of your progress. Not saving is like kryptonite. Use variables often and liberally, but do not be lazy with your naming. Keep it as accurate as possible. This is a long-term strategy for remembering how code works at a later point, if for some reason you would like to reuse your code, which happens often. This will not only save you time, but sometimes the autocomplete tool will not show you the options until the previous code is defined. I like to use name selections for scoping. This can be carried through from geometry stages right up to the end. Name selections can be defined in space claim and used throughout the process for material assignment, meshing, applying boundary conditions, and even for scoping results. Name selections are also extremely easy to implement within a script and for scoping results. If you do many similar simulations for similar products and the boundary conditions are almost always the same, you will not have to try and refigure out how to write the code. You will just need to change the values and keep your naming convention consistent. Comments, comments, and more comments. If you look at the following code examples, by inspection, you can already make sense of what is happening within the commented code, even if the rest does not make sense. I've purposefully shown a different coding language to demonstrate this point. I might not understand all of the variables and functions, but at least with the comments, I have an idea of what the code is supposed to do. This is probably the biggest pet peeve of the online community and someone else that wants to use your code when there are no comments. This is also a long-term strategy for when you want to reuse some old code that you did something similar in, or when you need to pass your code on to a colleague to use. It may seem like a waste of time, but if you get into the habit of commenting, everyone will really appreciate it. Practice and explore. I know that this is generic advice, but there is a reason it is given out so often. A mechanical specific tip to this is when you have completed something in the GUI, try and replicate it with the API. Again, 
coding is a skill you will need to practice over time. And finally, share what you learn. Before we finish up, I would like to just go over what was covered in the video and make a quick summary. First, we looked at how to access the scripting API and the shell and script editor. We looked at the basic usage of the API for scripting. We enabled the journal in beta feature from Workbench. We went into detail on how to use the autocomplete tool effectively and how to navigate through mechanical using the API. We looked at some useful code for identifying objects and how to access object information. We looked at how to apply boundary conditions in our simulation and I showed you how to import additional libraries and how to do basic looping. Finally, I gave some suggestions on my coding process and I went over some of the tips and tricks I would recommend. With this, I hope that you have found some useful information and ultimately that this will save you time. With that, please give us feedback on this content as it will help us improve future content. If you have a particular topic in mind you would like us to cover in future, please let us know. Finally, please share your scripting projects with us. We would love to see how scripting is helping in your field. Thank you all for watching and good luck harnessing your new superpower.